Meanwhile in Germany, big things were happening. From a base of virtually nothing, Dönitz, by now chief of the U-boat arm, had with Admiral Raider completely rebuilt the German submarine fleet. The backbone of this fleet was a Type 7 U-boat. They were built to fight out in the Atlantic, far away from their bases, and had a surface range of just over 9,000 miles at 10 knots. However, underwater that speed was cut down to a miserly two knots, so most of the U-boat attacks were made on the surface, where their low silhouette rendered them almost invisible. There are only two examples of these submarines left, and one, the U-995, can be seen near the German Submarine Museum at Le Beau. The U-995 started life at the Blorn and Voss shipyard and was launched in July 1943. Shortly after, she was badly damaged by Allied bombing and had to undergo major repairs before she could become operational. In her short career, the U-995 carried out nine patrols, sinking four vessels, and on one of those patrols, her captain, Hans George Hess, was awarded the Knight's Cross for a daring attack in Kirkham Fjord. At the end of the war in 1945, Hess surrendered his submarine at Trondheim, and her crew were interned. The submarine should have gone to Britain, but was judged to be in too bad a condition to make the trip, so she was handed over to the Norwegian Navy, who refitted her and returned her to service in 1952 under her new name, Kaora. Ironically, under a new pennant number, 309, she even visited England on a goodwill tour. But by 1962, her operational life was over, and she was laid up to await dispersal. It was then that the German Navy Association had the idea of rescuing her and putting her on display. The work to turn the battered U-995 into a museum exhibit took many years. But finally, in 1972, all was nearly ready. The submarine was slung beneath a colossal floating crane and slowly towed through a specially dug channel to the beach just in front of the memorial at Le Beau, where she was gently lowered into a specially prepared concrete cradle. At her dedication she was visited by many famous names, including the master submariner himself, Karl Dernitz. The U-995 has been beautifully restored and works very well as a museum. On one level she shows exactly what a submarine was like and just how complicated and cramped they were. But on another level the submarine still manages to connect with that awful past out there in the freezing Atlantic, the domain of the wolf packs. What it must have been like to fight and die in these steel coffins is almost unimaginable in today's world. So the U-995 fulfills its aim of being a museum but is also a reminder of those far off days that all of us hope we will never see again.